You're listening to the Angry Marks Podcast Network. I'm ready to tackle this show in the upcoming days. That is awesome. That is awesome. Um, so uh, what you been up to? This weekend, man. Um, for you know, first, well, Friday I had uh, Premier Wrestling for PWF, which is now under a new banner. It's called Pro Wrestling Future or Pro Wrestling's Future uh, down in Hubert, North Carolina. Uh, the company is Steve Carino. Uh, and it was in the battle world and stuff, and you know, it was like what, like a 15 person battle role, and I ended up throwing out like nine guys and ended up getting eliminated, but that was really cool. You know, Ricky Morton was there, and T.W. Anderson, uh, Zane, uh, Zane Riley. I mean, a great group of guys and stuff, man, was there. Brutal Bob Evans made an appearance along with Wildman Congo, former guest here on the Undisputed Wrestling Show, uh, and Tim Hughes. So Tough Guy Inc. was there in the building. Had a really good time Friday night. Uh, and then Saturday was, uh, I was in Mount Airy, North Carolina for the AIWF, AIWF 25th anniversary. Just because of luck of the draw, you know, um, you know, we all know how wrestling is. Guys canceled, some guys couldn't make it. Unfortunately, uh, Eric Darkstorm, uh, I heard from the grapevine that his oldest son, uh, had like a really high temperature, had to go to the hospital. So Eric Darkstorm couldn't make it. So that put me, they just basically put me in this place and I had, uh, I had a chance to wrestle for the AIWF World Heavyweight Title against Rodney Mack, former WWE TNA ECW star. Yeah, baby. I can legitimately say that I think that I've been in the ring with some of the toughest guys uh, in the Mid Atlantic: Damian Wayne, Lewis Moore. Uh, when I first started off, I got used to get beat up all the time by somebody uh, this, this older vet named the Iron Chief, Viper. A lot of guys from from the mid from the Mid Atlantic, Virginia, North Carolina, Georgia. Uh, and that was the hardest hitting match I've ever had in my ten, in my almost 10 years. Um, <laughs> brutal, just brutal, brutal, brutal. Uh, <laughs> like this guy, everybody asked me, like, Hey, how, are you okay? Is everything okay? And I was like, look, this guy hits like a man. I was like, I think that that is probably the hardest I've ever been hit in a wrestling ring, period. Uh, after the entire match was done, uh, it was a last man standing match. So of course, you know, you get pinned, count to 10. First person that can't answer the call, count of 10 loses and stuff. Um, you know, Rodney Mack is such a great competitor. Uh, tough as fucking nails. I, and excuse my language, but he's just tough as fucking nails. I get to the back and everybody's like, yo, that was so great. That was so brutal. Like, oh man, we knew it was going to be a hard hitting match, but Jesus Christ. Um, Everybody was like, hey, how does it feel? And I was like, I legitly feel like I got into a fist fight. Like, I feel like I got into a bar fight with a grizzly bear, and obviously the grizzly bear won. Uh, there was one <laughs> point in the match where there was three teenagers, and I'll never forget it for the rest of my life. There were three teenagers in the second row, uh, and we're outside the ring of stuff trading chops, and he hit me with this one brutal, brutal, brutal chop. Uh, and I dropped to my knees and grabbed the chair to try to stand up. And this teenager had to be about 15, 16 years old was like, look, man, please, for the love of God, just don't get up, please. Like, God, like he is beating the shit out of you. Just don't get up. Like, oh, uh, like I'll buy you a beer. Like these kids are like, yo, we'll buy you a beer or a soda, or whatever. Just please just don't get back up. Um, <laughs> and, and yeah, like I said, I woke up, I, I woke up Sunday. Um, and you, in vain, Kev, you can ask any wrestler, like every once in a while you have those matches where it's so physical, you know, you wake up the next morning and you're like, God, I'm so glad I don't have nothing to do. Um, and then Monday, Tuesday go, and by the end, by the middle of the week, you feel better. Uh, Sunday, uh, once again, I had the chance to hang with Bob, um, because of the, the very brutalizing match I had Saturday night, I wasn't able to participate physically in the seminar, but I was able to you know, go there and listen and ask questions and learn from not only Br brutal Bob Evans, but also Tim Hughes and Wildman Congo uh, and Josh Gary, who runs the USIWF uh, facility in Turnersville, North Carolina. Um, Josh Gary has a great, amazing set of students. Like a lot of his students and trainees and stuff are tearing up not only, you know, North Carolina, but also in Virginia and stuff. And, you know, some of the guys have made their way to Indiana uh, for Jimmy Felcher over there at PWF and down in Georgia, uh, up in, you know, uh, 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 Massachusetts and New York and Jersey and down in Florida. So it was just really great to be around the guys and, and uh, learn once again, you know, like I said, learning from Bob Evans. Now, every time I go to a seminar, this is like the fifth one I've done. I always learn something every time he talks. So it was a great, 
yet brutalizingly physical weekend for me. Well, that sounds awesome. I'm glad that you can make it on with us. Uh, since uh, Rodney Mack was there, was Jazz around with him? Uh, no, Jazz wasn't with him. He he brought his, uh, his manager and stuff. Not only did he bring his manager, but he also came to the ring looking like Ultimo Dragon with like 17 different titles and stuff. <laughs> he realized that Rodney Mack was like the heavyweight champion for like eight different promotions in like the South. Uh, not only in Texas, but also in Louisiana and Oklahoma. So like, this guy's like the champion everywhere. Ryback's trying to do that gimmick also. He took uh, Drew Skill's uh, championship at Heroes and Legends. Oh, uh, yeah. About time. All right. Well, uh, are you ready yeah. for the three count? I'm always ready, man. All right. Well, get out your green circles. It's time for three count. Count one. Pentagon has left AAA and has changed his name. Uh, he is now uh, Penta L Zero M, uh, which is kind of a nod to his uh, Zero Miedo catchphrase. Uh, and uh, he is saying that he is completely independent. He does not have to go back to AAA. Um, he appeared at an event for Crash Lucha Libre in Mexico over the weekend. Um, you know, I've, I've never been a huge uh, Lucha fan. I've always respected the art, but I have uh, recently gotten into Lucha Underground, and uh, Pentagon Jr. is obviously one of the main characters on there. He's the breakout star of that show. Um, what, what are your thoughts on, on uh, Pentagon leaving AAA promotion? Um, well, I am a huge, huge fan of Lucha Libre. Um, but I follow AAA and CMLL and a lot of the other smaller, uh, Lucha Libre companies and stuff, not only in Mexico, but also here in America. Uh, to me, it's a, you know, you might not realize it, but that's a big deal. Pentagon Jr. is one of the homegrown guys in AAA, uh, who started at the bottom of the roster and, you know, through sheer will, determination, and hard work and stuff, made it to be one of the main stars, not only in Mexico, but now here in America as well. Um, I can say that that is the equivalent, you know, Pentagon Jr. not re-signing with AAA, not, and leaving AAA and stuff, and declaring himself an independent pro wrestler, uh, not beholden to any company, uh, besides Lucha, Lucha Underground, obviously, uh, is the, is the equivalent of when Nakamura left, uh, New Japan. Uh, that's one of their top stars, uh, who left and stuff, and it's gonna be really hard for them to fill the void and stuff. Uh, as far as Pentagon goes, you know, I think that, he felt that that was what was best for his career. Uh, so you can't really knock him for that. Do you think that uh, the AAA promotion will put someone else in the Pentagon Junior mask? Because they have done that before with guys like LaParca. Um, I don't think they'll put anybody in the Pentagon Junior mask, um, mainly A, because of uh, the respect that he has not only uh, from the fans in Mexico, but also in the United States. But uh, the, the respect that he has from his fellow wrestlers, his fellow, fellow, uh, luchadors and stuff. Um, you know, to wear somebody else's mask, and we both know to wear somebody else's mask is not really a big sign of respect. You know, here in America, that's the same as somebody else coming out as the incredible Huck, um, and <laughs> trying to do the same gimmick as I am. Um, so I don't think that we'll see anybody else in the Pentagon mask, uh, besides Pentagon Jr. Okay, with that with that point about stealing someone's gimmick, I'm going to go ahead and move on to count two. Uh, Colt Cabana on his uh, podcast, The Art of Wrestling, last week talked about Marty Scroll. Basically, uh, WWE, um, I don't know if you want to say stealing or borrowing, uh, but uh, Marty Scroll's, uh, Scroll has been uh, using a um, umbrella as part of his gimmick for the last couple of years. And uh, now all of a sudden Jack Gallagher has been using it uh, too. And, and, you know, Colt kind of goes on to say, you know, why do the big guys have to have to take from the little guys? Um, so now whenever Marty uses it, he, people are going to think that he's copying off of uh, Gallagher because Gallagher's got all the national exposure. What are your thoughts on that? Will? Um, I think that WWE is always, uh, is, is always going to steal, borrow, acquire, whatever, whatever words you want to use, whatever adjective you want to use. They're always going to borrow from the indies. Um, you know, guys in the indies are very creative. They, they do their best to try to 
make themselves different from whatever you see on national TV. And of course, when you have a great idea like Martin Skull with the umbrella, with the, the mask and stuff, with the fur coat, with him, with him calling himself the villain and the way that he works and stuff, of course, it was only a matter of time before WWE was going to pinch and borrow what they wanted um, from that gimmick. Uh, I, if I was Marty Skull, I would feel honored, you know. Um, there's no reason to be mad about it. You know, it's going to happen anyway. The same way, you know, because I don't know if this is common knowledge. I'm pretty sure that you know it, Zane, because you're a very astute person. But WWE has a a room full of guys and ladies who just scour, you know, YouTube and stuff, uh, looking at the indies, and they'll find some of the indies like, oh, that's a really cool move. We should give that to such and such, or that's a really cool gimmick. We should tweak that and give it to such and such. Uh, we can do this in our own image and make it ours. Uh, unfortunately for Marty, of course, you know, even though he, he has national exposure also because he's the ROH television champion. Uh, so the, the smarter fan, the smart fan, uh, will, will know that, you know, when Jack Gallagher comes up with the umbrella, that it's, you know, a ripoff of Marty Skull. If, if anybody should feel bad in the situation, I think Jack Gallagher should feel bad. I think that, you know, it makes him look bad that, they had to take something from an indie, quote unquote, indie wrestler, and give it and give it to him, uh, instead of letting him make it on his own merit. I think that Jack Gallagher's gimmick and stuff, and the way that he wrestled, and his style of wrestling, was good enough to stay on its own. I don't think that he needed the umbrella uh, to make him stand out. I think that you know, of course, you know, you have Sheamus, who's also just as pale, but with his wrestling style, his catches can style of wrestling, that was enough for him to stand on its own. So. If anybody, in my opinion, is the loser in this situation, it would be Jack Gallagher. Yeah, but I want to let our, our listeners know that we're not faulting Jack Gallagher. He's doing what he's told. He's got a contract with the biggest wrestling organization in the world. As uh, uh, our buddy Necro Butcher once said, if WWE signed me and they wanted me to parade around in a pink tutu, I would do that. So they're just doing what they're told by the writers, but it's... It, I'm, I'm a little frustrated with it. I, you know, this wasn't coming from Marty Scroll, so he's he's not the one complaining. It's just something that's been pointed out, and I, I, I think it's kind of uh, BS on on for WWE to do that kind of thing. So, all right, count well, three. Well, look, look at Go ahead. Oh, okay. I was gonna say, look at it like this, day. How many times, you know, you're a huge avid fan of independent wrestling and stuff. How many times have you seen a very unique creative move on the indies and then two, three weeks later, before the end of the month is out, you see that same move on Monday Night Raw? You know, it, it's always happened. It's always going to happen. Um, as an independent wrestler myself, the best is, the, all you can do is just look at it, you know, make a little joke about it uh, or ignore it. You know, and if you're going to make something, make a joke about it, you know. Take it lightheartedly. Say, hey, you know what? I'm glad that I can inspire somebody. Uh, there's there was, no reason. Of course, you know, Colt Cabana is very opinionated and stuff, and, and he's very he's an avid independent wrestler and stuff, and he's very outspoken as an independent wrestler. He has a huge platform. So, of course, he's going to speak out about it because um, he feels that he's taken up for, you know, he he's already said, let me put it like this, Cole Cabana has already said he's, he's making his money no matter what. There's, in my opinion, there's nothing that Vince can do to touch Colt Cabana. Um, so I, maybe Colt feels that he's speaking for somebody who can't really speak up right now. I think that the best thing that Vince could do to silence Colt Cabana is to sign him and put him on 205 Live. What, sign Marty Skull? No, silence, silence Colt Cabana. That was a really funny Oh, uh, yeah. And, and you're no selling me. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. All right. Count three. New Japan uh, Pro Wrestling has said that uh, hopefully by 2018, they want to have a U.S. offshoot territory, uh, primarily based in California. They said that uh, in Japan, their roster is uh, about 75% Japanese workers, 25% uh, non-Japanese. So their American offshoot, they'd want to have uh, around 75% American and 25% Japanese. Um, I, I'm not even going to ask you. I know, I, I think I know what you're going to say. I think it's awesome. I think, I know that they've had a uh, dojo 
in the uh, California area in the past. I think that it would open up a lot of opportunities uh, to get uh, noticed by independent workers, so I'm all for it. What do you have to say? Oh, yeah, I totally feel the same way. I mean, any place that's – anytime there's another – uh, company for the boys to work at, for the ladies to work at, it's always a good thing. Um, let this be another example that contrary to the naysayers, professional wrestling is not dying. Uh, if anything, like, like I've heard from several other people, uh, Brutal Bob, especially, professional wrestling is probably on one of its, or probably on the, the way to having one of its greatest upswings since the golden era, since H- Hogan and Macho Man and everybody else. Uh, there's, of course, no, we don't have the territories, but you have so many different promotions, so many different uh, bigger companies, not WWE, where guys are making money, where guys are actually, you know, uh, making a, a living. You know, you have Lucha Underground, you have Evolve, you have ROH, you have New Japan. Uh, now with, you know, New Japan uh, USA, I guess that's what we're going to call it. Uh, that's just another opportunity for, for guys who may not otherwise get seen on a national level to get the recognition and the exposure that they work so hard for and truly deserve. Uh, of course, if given the opportunity, if there's an open tryout or if there's a call out for guys to come and try out, uh, <laughs> I will be on the first plane smoking to California <laughs> because, uh, that, that, you know, for any, and I think that any independent wrestler who doesn't want to work for new Japan, uh, whether it's in the States or whether it's in Japan is an idiot. Um, you know, that, that's a great opportunity to not only learn, uh, but also to get, you know, your name out there and stuff. I think that you could fit the uh, Scott Flash Norton role really well. I, I would like to think that I could be the American version of Shibata. Um, uh, <laughs> like, after this past weekend, I'd like to think I could be the American version of Shibata. Um, he is slowly uh, becoming my second favorite New Japan wrestler, uh, right behind Tanahashi. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Um, this is the wrestling nerd cast on the angry marks podcast network, uh, angry marks.com uh, backslash podcast. You get all your awesome, uh, podcast needs fulfilled there for pro wrestling and mixed martial arts. I go to, uh, the iTunes store, hit, uh, podcast search, Angry Marks, all one word as the keyword, and it gets delivered to my uh, uh, phone daily. On Mondays, I've got Raw Reaction. Tuesdays, of course, the Wrestling Nerdcast. Wednesdays, Glove Up or Shut Up. Thursday is the Mothership. It's the uh, Thursday AMP. Friday, I uh, usually have Impact Implosion and Over the Top Radio. Then over the weekends, the SmackDown Rundown. So all your awesome podcast needs for pro wrestling and mixed martial arts. All right, uh, Huck, main body tonight. We're going to be talking, uh, we're going to be making some predictions. You uh, have your crystal ball in front of you. Yes, I have it all shined up and ready to predict. Awesome, awesome. Well, let's start with uh, NXT TakeOver San Antonio. Uh, it'll be on Saturday night. Uh, I've got five matches listed. Uh, so I'll start at the bottom of the card and work our way up. Uh, uh, first match I have listed uh, Roderick Strong versus uh, Andre Siena Almas. I think this is Strong's uh, network special debut, isn't it? I think so. There, uh, I didn't hear the last part. Who is he facing? Uh, Andre Siena Almas, who has recently uh, done a uh, uh, heel turn. Okay, I'm I'm gonna go with Roderick Strong, man, um, aka Mister Roh, uh, hard hitting. Um, even though he's been, you know, wrestling for, you know, well over 10 years, 10, 15 years and stuff, man. Um, just, I think that he's in better shape than he was at ROH. Um, I think that he's hungrier. I think that he hasn't been this hungry, uh, since his second or third year in ROH. Um, and that's including when he was joined the House of Truth and stuff. I think that he's hungry. Uh, I think that he's in great shape. I think that he, uh, has probably found his niche, and I think that we're going to see a very different Roger Strong than what we're used to seeing. He actually uh, debuted in Ring of Honor in 2003. So he was with uh, Ring of Honor for 13 years. Hello? And uh, I was actually at a random Lucha Libre nice. show in Florida when I visited my um, mom there 
uh, two years ago, and uh, it was it was so weird. Uh, Fred Ottman, our, our buddy uh, Typhoon, was uh, in the crowd. I hung out a little bit and talked with him. Uh, Bob Cook, uh, who's amazing uh, pro wrestler, uh, he was in the crowd, uh, talked uh, with him. Uh, but, you know, all I knew is that it was Lucha Libre, and all of a sudden, Roderick Strong versus, uh, um, oh, the uh, former NXT guy that uh, had the hippie gimmick, who's now in New Japan. Oh, yeah. Uh, what's his name? Um, DJ Parker, DJ, maybe? What was it? CJ, yes, CJ Parker, who is doing a phenomenal job. Um, just, I mean, like, his match with, I think that his match in New Japan, and we talked about it um, Thursday night AMP and stuff, and they were talking about um, Wrestle Kingdom and stuff. Uh, just doing, he's so much better now in New Japan than he was in WWE. Um, his match with Cody Rhodes, like, you could tell that um, he was the, the leader of that match. So, yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, I saw them two wrestle each other a couple years ago at a random Lucha Libre show. It was awesome. Um, I'm, I'm going to go with uh, Roderick Strong. I have no idea. No idea why they wouldn't, uh, why he wouldn't win. So let's just mark a both for Roderick Strong from both of us. All right, the next match I have listed: Eric Young versus Ty Dillinger. What are your thoughts on on Ty Dillinger? Oh man, I remember Ty in the Indies um, doing a lot of shows with him, and stuff man. Just a great, awesome guy. Um, I think that he, the fans love him uh, with the whole ten. Um, it reminds me of, you know, Daniel Bryan's yes chance and stuff. So, uh, I, I like him. I, I, I feel like he's not going to be in NXT too much longer, especially with the way that he's been received by the fans. Oh yeah, I definitely agree. Um, I, I'm going to go with Eric Young on this and, uh, we'll, we'll talk about Ty Dillinger later on, um, why I don't think he's going to go over. The next match I have listed is a fatal four way match for the NXT Women's Championship. Now, I don't know if this is a single fall or if this is uh, uh, an elimination match. It hasn't been made clear to me. But you've got the champion, Asuka, uh, versus a uh, member of Sanity, Nikki Cross, versus Billy Kay, versus Pey- Peyton Royce. What is your prediction for uh, that fatal four-way match? Um, I think that this might be the sleeper match of the night. I don't think that... Uh, with the exception of Oscar, um, a lot of the ladies don't have the same uh, hype coming into the match as it would, you know, a, like what a year and a half, two years ago when it was Bailey and and uh, you know Charlotte and Sasha Banks and stuff. Like they might not have the same amount of fanfare going into the match, but I think that those ladies are just as talented as the uh, the three ladies I just mentioned. Um, I think that they're going to surprise a lot of people. Like I said before, and I'll say it again. Uh, these ladies who are in professional wrestling now, you know, they're just not trying to cruise by on their looks in the TNA and stuff. They're getting in there and they're hitting each other hard and fast and they're very athletic. They're actual professional wrestlers. Uh, with that being said, I still think that Asuka is going to retain the title um, because right now I don't think that any of those ladies are ready to, I guess for lack of a better phrase, be the face of that division yet. Okay, I I agree with your sentiment, Will, about Asuka being uh, great, but I'm I'm gonna say because they need a change because she's been champion for way too long. And this is a perfect opportunity, a fatal four way, uh, so that way Asuka doesn't even have to be involved in the decision. I'm gonna say that we're gonna get a new champion, and out of those uh, three remaining competitors, I'm gonna guess Peyton Royce to be the new champion for NXT Women's Division. I can, I can see that. I, I can totally see that, Zane. Um, I can, I can definitely see that, yeah. Uh, if, there's, if they're going to take the title off of her, I, off of Oscar, I can definitely see Peyton uh, being the next women's champion. So, okay. If she loses the title, I will, I will agree with you. Okay, but you know whenever I predict a title change, it never happens. So, we'll see. We'll see. All right. Um, for the next match I have listed... The NXT Tag Team Championship, we've got the champions DIY, which is Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa versus the authors of Pain, Razor, and Akum uh, with their manager, Paul Ellering. 
I'm going to guess that uh, I'm going to predict that DIY retains the championship and it's going to be uh, some some sort of Paul Ellering interference is going to backfire on him. And that's how uh, Gargano and Champa retain the championship. What are your thoughts? I'm, I'm going to go with um, what are the authors of pain. Is that their name? Yes. Yes. I'm, I'm going to go with them, man. There are big, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with them. They're a big, brutal, physical team, man. There's a throwback, uh, to, to your, one of, to your favorite tag team, Demolition, uh, which is something, you know, yeah. that I think that the tag team division in WWE needs. Um, they need a big, physical, mean tag team, uh, that you can, you know, and, and with them, and of course we all know with wrestling and stuff, it's so much better when the baby faces are chasing the titles than rather than being chased and stuff. So I think that, uh, if D, DIYs, you know, go ahead and drop the titles now and then they spend the next several months chasing the titles, uh, it'll make for a way better story. Um, and then, you know, once they retain the titles and stuff, I'd like to see those two big guys go up to the main roster and just wreak havoc on everybody. Um, <laughs> I don't see any other tag team. I don't see any other tag team in WWE, including Sheamus and Cesaro. Uh, even coming physically close to these two big monsters. Uh, plus, you know, as a personal favorite, you know, being a lifelong wrestling fan, it will be great to see Paul Ellering back on national TV in WWE, um, where he belongs. Um, and hopefully now, even though, of course, you know, wrestling fans who do know will always say this, but hopefully now from the mainstream wrestling fan, he will get his just due as being one of the greatest managers of all time. Do you really think that Paul Ellering would want to go back to the main roster? I mean, he's he's at an age that traveling is not the easiest thing. And for NXT, what's he show up for TV once a month? I, I, yeah, yeah, but I mean, yeah, you're right, Zane. But at the same time, I mean, who doesn't want to be on national TV? I mean, well, okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Huck, uh, the main event for the NXT Championship, we've got challenger Bobby Roode uh, versus champion Shinsuke Nakamura. What are your thoughts on this match? I think that there are no losers in this match. <laughs> um, Bobby Roode, we've known since he's been in TNA that he was a star. That was just, you know, just missing something from being a superstar. And now thanks to the powers that be, Triple H and the creative team at uh, WWE, they've given him that little small piece that he needed to take him over the top. That guy is a star. I don't give a shit what nobody says. And then, of course, you have Nakamura, one of the greatest Japanese wrestlers of all time. Um, I, I, I really don't know who I would pick. I mean, any way you look at it, it's great for the company. It's great for the business. Uh, but if I have to pick a winner... I will go with Bobby Roode um, just because, you know, with his entrance, with the way he carries himself, um, he reminds me of he's a throwback to the good old NWA Jim Crocker promotion days and stuff where, you know, with, with Ric Flair and stuff when he was styling the profile and stuff and jet riding, jet flying, limousine driving and stuff, man. Um, I would love to see Bobby Roode as the NXT champ uh, just for no other reason to hear the promos that are going to come out of that man's mouth. Um. Well, do you, do you know uh, do you know about the spoiler for tomorrow night's NXT? What happens? No, and I try to avoid spoilers whenever possible. But go ahead and tell me for the sake of the show. Okay, well, it's not a huge spoiler. Um, you probably you 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 know this already that uh, um, Chris Hero shows up tomorrow night. Are, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know about that. Yes, I definitely know about Chris Hero show. Oh, that's right. Oh. So, so. I'm gonna I'm gonna say oh. that uh, Nakamura is gonna go over on Bobby Roode. They're gonna set up some three way matches between uh, Nakamura, Roode, and Cassius Ono. Um, so, and I, I think that I think they're gonna hang that out until WrestleMania, whatever the night before WrestleMania, whatever that NXT Takeover is going to be called. Um, so, and then I think uh, Nakamura is gonna show up on either Raw or SmackDown the day after WrestleMania. So I'm going to go with Nakamura on this uh, I, this outing. Can I go ahead and say that I think it's stupid that they made Chris Hero come back as Cash's Ono? What about it? 
I say I think it's stupid that they had him come back as Cassius Ono instead of Chris Hero. Um, the fans know him as Chris Hero. They already what are they gonna do for his gimmick shirt? They already have Kevin Owens with the whole KO thing. So what the <laughs> hell is Cassius Ono gonna do that's different? Um, <laughs> I, I think that that was they let everybody else come in under their actual name. They should just let him come back as Chris Hero. Period. Yeah, but I think I think people have already they know about his previous NXT run, and so I actually kind of like that he's he's going to be Ono, oh so that way they can play into that fact. You know, maybe eventually he can do a semi shoot interview talking about it or something. I I don't know. I I don't mind it so much. I think people know him as both. So, all right. Um, are you ready for uh, talking about the Rumble? Yes. Yes. Okay, um, seven matches that I have listed, so we won't take too long with each of them, but the first one is the WWE Cruiserweight Championship match, champion Rich Swan versus Neville, who's been tearing it up lately in the Cruiserweight division, being a, a monster uh, in that division. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with, uh, with Rich Swan. So by hook or by crook, he's going to come away with the championship. So that will make Neville even more mean, destroying everybody in the cruiserweight division. What What are your predictions? Um, I think that Neville's going to take it. I think that um, because, you know, of, of all his injuries and stuff and the fact that they, they've been trying to strap this rocket to his back and shoot him to the moon and stuff, and because of one, one reason or another, they just haven't been able to. I think that... Um, it, it's been a blessing in disguise for him. Uh, I think that with this whole 205 Cruiserweight deal, that that is perfect for him. Uh, they finally gave him uh, the right gimmick in WWE and stuff. Luckily, they didn't go with the Mighty Mouse gimmick at first. Uh, yeah. And and he's going to, I think that they're going to put the strap on him and stuff, man, and just let him uh, be the face uh, of that division. Okay. Um, singles match, Sasha Banks versus Nia Jax. Uh, who do you think is going to win that one? Oh, I want to say Nia Jax, man. They, I haven't been this excited about a female wrestler uh, since uh, Awesome Kong was was in WWE and stuff. They need a. I love the whole anti diva uh, women's wrestler and stuff where she's not pretty, she's not whimsical with the, all the weave and the hair and stuff. Like she's just a big bitch that will beat your ass. Um, <laughs> I, I love Nia Jax. I think that she is amazing. I think that she is what the women's division needs. Uh, and I think that they put her for, you know, I think they put her in the ring with the right person. I think that Sasha um, does a great job um, playing the scrappy underdog and stuff and fighting from underneath. So I think it's, A, I think it's going to be a really great match. And B, I think that Nia Jax is going to go over. They have to uh, as she makes her way to the women's title. I'm, I'm going to disagree with you on Nia Jax just slightly. Um, I think that that what you're talking about is what the WWE is going for, but there's there's an issue there. She's way too pretty. She's got way too pretty of a face to be a true monster, but she she doesn't have the typical uh, you know um, model body to to be. Yeah, you know the pretty girl out of there. So I think that they've they, they've got to treat her differently. She, you know, I don't know. She she's very she's got a very pretty face. Um, so she can't just be a straight up monster. Uh, but I I do think that that's the way that they're trying to portray her. Uh, I agree that uh, she will be going over on Sasha Banks on on Sunday. All right, next match I have uh, listed is the. Tag team match for the Raw Tag Team Championship. Special stipulation is that it, there are two referees assigned to the match. Um, it is champions Cesaro and Sheamus versus challengers The Club, Luke Gallows, and Carl Anderson. Before I ask for your prediction, is having two referees a gimmick match or, you know... What are your thoughts on this two referees assigned to the match uh, stipulation? I think that it's a, not only do I think that it's a gimmick match, um, but I also think that it's almost guaranteed that both referees are going to get bumped and a third ref is going to make his way down to the ring. Um, if that doesn't happen, then I feel that we're going to have a dusty finish. Well, one referee says this, the other <laughs> referee says that, and 
uh, Cesaro and Sheamus walk out with the titles. Well, since since you mentioned the the dusty finish, they actually did that on Raw a couple weeks ago. That was the first time I ever remember a dusty yes. finish hurting the heels. It usually gets sympathy for the the baby face, but this time it happened to the heels. It, it was just so odd to me. Yes, yes, I remember. I remember that match. I felt the same way. I was like, "That's not how that match is supposed to go." Like, that's, <laughs> they're like, "That's a dusty finish." And, and and I was I was chilling with a with a fellow friend of mine, um, a fellow wrestler, and I was like, "Hey, that was a dusty finish, right?" And he was like, "Yes." I was like, "But that wasn't a dusty finish," and he was like, "No." He's like, "It's really weird." It's like it's a dusty, it's a non-dusty, dusty finish, and I was like, "Yeah." It's a dusty finish that's not a dusty finish, and it comes off, you know, kind of funky. Yeah, it was really funky. I like that. That was crazy. Uh, <laughs> all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, oh man, this is tough. Um, since it's the pre-show, I don't think that they're gonna have any titles changing hands on the pre-show. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna say Cesaro and Sheamus uh, keep the titles, but I, I think that the club's gonna get a run with the title soon, but not. Not just yet. Um, all right. Yeah, next I'm, I'm, Go yeah, ahead. I would definitely agree with that. Okay. I know. I would say I definitely agree with that. Like, eventually they will, but not. There's no. There will be no title changes. Well, except for the cruiserweight title. There'll be one title change in the pre-show. That'll be the cruiserweight title. Actually, I think that I think that the cruiserweight is is scheduled for the main card, but who knows? They might bump it. They. I think that there's. Two hours of pre-show and then four hours of the main show. So who knows how they're going to configure Jeez. that all. All right, uh, next match I have listed for the Raw Women's Championship, uh, which is it's odd because they've got two Raw Women's matches listed here, but no SmackDown Women's match. Um, but for the Raw Women's Championship, champion Charlotte Flair versus challenger Bailey. Uh, I think that Charlotte Flair is gonna gonna hold on to it. I I don't think that they're gonna elevate Bailey until WrestleMania. Um, so it's gonna be a, a schmozzy finish, but Charlotte Flair is gonna uh, hold on to the championship. What are your thoughts? Um, I I will agree on everything but the but the finish. I think that uh, I agree with you that Charlotte will uh be be victorious and retain in this match. Um, I do believe that they're gonna wait. Until WrestleMania, um, if not WrestleMania, the Monday Night Raw after WrestleMania. So one of those two days, Bailey will become the women's champion, the Raw women's champion. Uh, but I think that this match, I think that maybe they're going to actually have Charlotte go over clean. I don't think there's going to be a, a funky finish. I think that, um, she'll go over clean and I think that, uh, that will be best suited for the purpose of elevating Bailey that, you know, like I said, once again, Bailey's one of those, uh, professional wrestlers and stuff, one of those talents that uh, gets over so much well when she has the sympathy of the crowd. Not so much as when she gets cheated, but when you can tell that she does her best, she gives it her all, she just comes up a little bit short. Uh, it's when she really, when the when the fans and the crowd really get behind her and stuff. She, she's able to evoke uh, that type of emotion from the fans and stuff. So uh, it'll be, in my opinion, for this, for, for this match, it'll be best if Charlotte went over clean as a heel, and we just see Bailey, you know, do her do her best, give it her all, and just come up short. Okay, all right. Um, next match I have listed. It is uh, I don't know even know how to go over this. It's a no disqualification match with Chris Jericho suspended in a shark cage above the ring. Uh, it's for the WWE Universal Champion Challenger Roman Reigns versus Champion Kevin Owens. Um, are they just trying to throw as many things at this as they can to distract us? That is Roman Reigns probably going to win the championship. Um, so weird to me. I think that Reigns is going to win. I think that Jericho is going to somehow interfere by throwing something down, but he's going to miss giving it to Owens and Reigns is going to pick it up. And so uh, so there'll be heat between Owens and Jericho continuing. And I think that uh, walking out of the Royal Rumble will be uh, new Universal Champion Roman Reigns. Uh, wh what do you think? Um, I, I think that's the exact opposite. I think that, um, I think that 
Kevin Owens is going to go over. I think that he will retain his title. Um, I think that maybe it is just me, but I can't. I feel like I remember the match where like Jim Cornette or somebody was suspended over the cage, and a third person came down and lowered the cage uh, mid match, and that's how the heel ended up going over. Um, I, I I don't like the I, I don't understand it. I don't like the whole. Most of the time, I like the the person suspended over the cage, but I like it better when it's like a Weasley manager, like Jim Cornette or something like that. Um, big, strong, tough wrestler having a talent up suspended above the ring in a cage is just hokey to me. Um, me myself, I personally don't like it. Um, I think that it takes away from the match. Um, I, I don't think that this would be a good time. I don't. Because I, correct me if I'm wrong, but whoever is the champion after the Royal Rumble basically is going to main event WrestleMania. Am I correct? Well, well, you've got two different championships, so you know sometimes they put the one championship as the opening match for WrestleMania. So you know, just because yeah. Roman Reigns or Kevin Owens walk out doesn't mean that they're going to be in the main event. Well, let's say fifty percent chance that whoever walks out of this match um, is going to be the main whoever goes over this match is going to has a 50 percent chance of main event in wrestlemania um i think that i think that hopefully wwe has learned from his past mistakes the past couple of years um and they're not going to put roman reigns in the main event at wrestlemania um i think that kevin owens has done a great 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 job as the champion uh him and chris jericho are doing some of the some of they're pretty good they're, they're very good together and stuff i don't think i don't see them breaking them up anytime soon um so I think that there will be outside interference. Maybe there might be a third person come down and lower the cage or whatever. Uh, somebody's going to interfere, and I think that Kevin Owens is going to go over. I, I hate to break this to you, but CM Punk held the main championship in WWE for 400-some days, and he did not main event in WrestleMania. Well, yeah, that was the rocking John Cena. I remember that. <laughs> So that brings us up to the next scheduled event, the uh, next scheduled match for the WWE Championship. You've got champion AJ Styles versus challenger John Cena. Do, 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 do. I think that John Cena is going to win and he will headline WrestleMania. This is kind of weird because once again, whoever wins this match is gonna. I don't think that John Cena needs to headline WrestleMania. I, I think that he, uh, I think that he, he realizes he that also that you know he doesn't he, need it. He doesn't need it, but Vince always does that where he'll put whoever the bigger name is into the into the main event slot at WrestleMania because he thinks that that's going to sell more tickets and more network subscriptions. So go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I think that. No, no, you're, I think that you're halfway right. I think that Vincent Man puts uh, guaranteed, somebody he knows is guaranteed, guaranteed uh, to close out WrestleMania. And then for the past 50, for the past 10 years, you know, John Cena has been that guy that you know, no matter what happens throughout the rest of the card, the main event will at least be a solid match um, because John Cena is in it. Um, but AJ Styles, one of the best wrestlers in the world, um, so, of course, you know, I think that while Vince may want John Cena, I think the rest of creative may want AJ Styles. I'm not sure. Anyway, look at it. I think that this is going to be a rematch for – that this match, this match is going to be one of two matches. It's, I think that there's going to be a rematch at WrestleMania. I think that this match right here may be our main event for WrestleMania. Um, and because I believe that, I think that AJ Styles is going to go over at the Royal Rumble um, and John Cena, AJ Styles – will be the main event for WrestleMania. Okay, that leads us to the final match of the card. It is the 30-man Royal Rumble match. Um, the, the names listed so far, Goldberg, Brock Lesnar, Big E, Kofi Kingston, Xavier Woods, Chris Jericho, Braun Strowman, Baron Corbin, Undertaker, Dean Ambrose, The Miz, Dolph Ziggler, Cesaro, Sheamus, Bray Wyatt, Randy Orton, Luke Harper, Big Show, Sami Zayn, Big Cass, Rusev, and Mojo Raleigh. Did you watch um, Raw last night? No, I haven't finished it. Why? Did you see uh, Sami Zayn and uh, Seth Rollins? No, I didn't. Okay. 
Well, for the sake of the podcast, it, this happened early in the show. Um, Sami Zayn beat Seth Rollins, so Sami Zayn gets a spot in the Royal Rumble. Seth Rollins does not. I'm going to. Uh, I want. I wanted to know a couple of surprise entrants that you thought. I'll give you a second to think about that, and I will uh, say mine. I think that uh, Rollins will uh, be uh, in a mask of some sort. Maybe La Luchadora's brother, um, and he'll enter in kind of uh, as the old Midnight Rider, uh, Dusty gimmick, or the Machines back in the WWE. Um, so I think that Rollins will get in under a mask. I think that Ty Dillinger uh, will come in at the 10 spot. I think that that would be amazing. And you know they always bring back some sort of a legend. I think that it's going to be that my bold prediction is that it's going to be Sting uh, coming back for the Royal Rumble. So, do you have any have any uh, a couple of uh, surprise entrants that you can think that you want to predict? Well, with, with being to what you just said about Sami Zayn and Seth Rollins and stuff, I feel like you're right. I think that Seth, Seth Rollins will definitely uh, weasel his way into the Royal Rumble. Um, I, of course, I've said it for like the last couple of weeks ever since the news broke. I would love to see Steve Carino um, <laughs> make an appearance <laughs> in the Royal Rumble. Uh, I, w- I would love it. And I don't give a shit if anybody hates it or whatever. I would love to see Steve Carino make an appearance in the Royal Rumble. Um, it's it's kind of hard to say legends and stuff, man. Maybe, you know, Rob Van Dam, um, Rhino might make an appearance. Uh, Oof. Jesus, I, I don't know. Rhino's, um, Rhino's on the SmackDown roster. I don't think that you can consider him a surprise entry. Oh, well, yeah, good point. Uh, I don't know. I guess uh, I would like to think... Hmm. It'd be really cool to see a punk man the parents. Holy shit. Um, he's a very, you know... You haven't heard a whole whole lot about CM Punk. It'd be kind of cool to see a punk man the parents. Uh, you know, from recent situations and stuff at, uh, at New Japan and stuff with Kenny Omega, it wouldn't be that big of a surprise if Kenny Omega made an appearance of the world one, but he left New Japan and signed with WWE and, and made an appearance kind of a la AJ Styles. Um, so, I don't know, I, 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 I have no, Jesus, I, I think the world one is one of those days, is one, like with the world one, when it comes to surprise entrance, I think that, uh, that's one of those moments where you just get to sit back and be a fan. Like, oh shit, I can't believe he actually came back. Uh, Gilbert, I'll say Gilbert comes back this year because Goldberg's <laughs> there. I would like to think that Gilbert makes an appearance at the Royal Rumble. <laughs> I don't think that your uh, Rob Van Dam thought is that far off. I think that that is within the realm of possibility. All right, who do you think is going? What is your prediction for the Royal Rumble winner? Mm. Well, I know it's not going to be Goldberg or Brock Lesnar. I'm, I'm almost certain it's not going to be either one of them, too. Um, maybe. Ooh, man. Um, I will say. I will say Seth Rollins. I say he weaves his way in and ends up winning the Royal Rumble. There you go. Okay. All right. My My prediction. And it's a little out there, but I'm going to predict that The Undertaker wins. And he has stayed, he's shown up on SmackDown. He was drafted to SmackDown. He showed up on Raw saying that he doesn't listen to anybody. So that way it'll be up in the air of who he challenges at WrestleMania um, for the championship. So uh, I'm, I'm going to say Undertaker and uh, so that way it can he can challenge either champion. So I'm gonna say I'm gonna say the Undertaker is not gonna win. I think that they're gonna uh, that whoever eliminates the Undertaker, and I'm hoping that it's Bray Wyatt. Um, whoever eliminates the Undertaker is is gonna end up facing the Undertaker in a singles match. Okay. All right. Well, that's my choice. That's my prediction. You're predicting somebody that's not even in the match. So. <laughs> hey, I also said that Steve. I also said Steve Carino should make an appearance. I would love if all of the trainers um, from the Performance Center, include Norman Smiley, I would love to see a, a WrestleMania. I would love to see a Royal Rumble Big Wiggle. <laughs> <laughs> all 
All right. Well, uh, since we've had so many predictions and everything, we're not going to do a big question this week. Uh, so just my big question to you is, what do you got going on this weekend? Uh, this week I am uh, traveling up to Bristol, Pennsylvania. I am going to do the Ring of Honor seminar slash tryout uh, Saturday and Sunday. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to go out there and see where I stand amongst the big dogs and stuff, basically. Uh, and then hopefully this Saturday night, I plan on going to check out a really cool show. I plan on going, finally making my way, uh, to the Monster Factory. They have a show Saturday night and stuff. So I plan on going by there, checking it out and stuff and, and seeing what's going on at the Monster Factory, saying hello to Danny Cage, um, and, and Red Scorpion and all those guys up there and stuff. Uh, Mike Orlando, like I plan on going there and saying hi to those guys. But my big thing this weekend is, um, is doing the ROH seminar. I've lost like 30 pounds in the last six weeks and stuff to get ready for it. So, you know, just say, you know, wish me good luck. All right. That's, that's what I was just going to say. Do you, we wish you good luck? Do we wish you break a leg or is that too serious of an issue? You know, what, let's, what do we say let's, to us? Uh, let's wrestling? not say break a leg. Okay. All right. Uh, good luck. G- good luck is fine. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm not going to wish you good luck. I'm just going to tell you to show them what you've got, what you can do, listen to their feedback, and you know that you know that you've got the skills to go far in this, and you're and you're willing to learn. So, all right, um, I I this weekend I am not doing anything. Um, so, uh, uh, yay, weekend off. Uh, and the following week, I will be on Saturday the 4th. I'll be in Marion, Indiana for Intense Championship Wrestling. Should be a great card. Um, so, uh, thanks to, uh, Kill a Kev. Uh, and, uh, you got anything else to add, Will? Uh, yeah, like next weekend, next Friday is my birthday. I'm not gonna say how old I am. Um, but next weekend is a, is a huge thing for me.